Good evening. In tonight's episode, I'm going to be pointing a $1 million telescope at the god of all planets, Jupiter. The detail achievable with this telescope is so impressive that you can actually make out some of the surface colour from its four Galilean moons. I'm also going to be showing you how you can spot it yourself from your own light polluted garden, as well as seeing where two more wonders rank on our infamous wonder wall. Could tonight be the night that we finally reveal what is the greatest wonder of our night sky? Let's find out. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. Coming up on tonight's episode, we're exploring free galaxies for the price of one. We're also going to learn how to spot a super secret hidden light show from your garden, and what level of surface detail you can make out on Jupiter with just a $500 telescope. Our first wonder of the evening is an exciting trio of galaxies known as the Leo Triplet. I hope you're not hungry because one of these galaxies is nicknamed the Hamburger Galaxy. Every year the spring months mean one thing, and that is galaxy season. Between February and May, the Milky Way has disappeared from our view and our attention instead turns to our galactic companions. Located at the back end of Leo is a gorgeous trio of galaxies, which are very easy to pick up with your camera. But are they easy enough to be picked up with just a $500 smart telescope placed in my light polluted back garden? Well, of course. Now, rather than focus on the Hamburger Galaxy in the top left, I'm going to focus my efforts on Messier 66 at the bottom. This galaxy is undergoing a severe gravitational tug of war, causing it to appear lopsided. As a result, this galaxy is comprised of intense star-forming regions, which the $1 million telescope does an okay job of capturing the vibrancy of, but the billion dollar space telescope captures it in jaw-dropping detail. There is a supermassive black hole at the core of this galaxy, 10 million times the mass of our own sun. This image by Hubble really gives you a sense of the scale of this galactic giant. So as far as beauty goes, the Leo triplet isn't half bad to look at, the power of this trio is clear for all to see, and as for the mystery, it's very obvious to see what's going on here. Therefore, the Leo triplet earns a wonder rating of... 69. So, that's a 69 for our galactic threesome, the Leo triplet, which means it ranks 30th on our wonder wall. Do you agree with that rating yourself? Let me know what your ratings would be in the comments down below, and you could be another chance of winning your very own Seastar S50 smart telescope. Over the first three episodes, more than 150 of you have entered into the competition for your chance to win one of the 88 prizes up for grabs. Which means right now, the odds of you winning a prize are basically one in two. All you have to do is simply comment your very own ratings for the wonders featured in today's episode. That's it. Thank you to all of you who also explain why it is that you gave each wonder a particular rating. I'm really enjoying reading them and the discussions that are being had in the comments below. You can enter into this competition a maximum of 14 times. That's once per episode. The closing deadline for entries is the 31st of January, 2026. Best of luck. Now, many of you may recall from the start of this series, we looked at a very large star cluster known as Messier Object 13. Well, our next wonder is very similar, except this star cluster is a bit more dazzling. Here is Messier Object 3. Messier 13 is definitely one of the most popular star clusters in our night sky, and it is the biggest reason that our next target, Messier 3, is so underappreciated. To a casual observer, they look the exact same, they are just a couple of star clusters. M13 is best observed during the summer, whilst M3 is best seen during the spring. But the real facts are that not only does M3 contain hundreds of thousands of more stars than M13, but it puts on one of the coolest cosmic light shows in our galaxy. You may remember from last week that we learned how the Hubble Variable Nebula varies weekly, and you can document these changes even as an amateur. Well, this wonder is for those of you who can't wait that long and want to see changes within the same night. Messier 3 is comprised of 274 RR Lyrae stars. These vary in brightness cycles as short as 5 hours, with the average being 12 hours. So as you image it throughout a single night, or back-to-back -back nights, you will be able to clearly see the change in brightness for lots of the stars. Even without taking this light show into consideration, the star cluster just looks better than Messier 13. And the $500 telescope is helping me make the case for how underappreciated this deep sky object is. The million dollar telescope seems to reveal about 5 times as many stars in the cluster, whilst the billion dollar telescope is the only one that lets you see clearly into the core. I've spoken before about imagining what it would be like to live at the center of an ancient star cluster like this, and how chaotic your life would be, since you're packed so tightly to other solar systems. But now imagine if your next door neighbor was varying in brightness every 12 hours. 
So forget a cosmic mosh pit, you've got a cosmic disco going on at the same time now. What a weird universe we live in. Personally, I think that Messier 3 is one of the most beautiful star clusters in our night sky. With a beauty rating of 86, a power of 80, and a mystery of 50. This gives it a wonder rating of... 72. This is certainly another wonder to image if you're interested in capturing the universe in motion. Wow, talk about a light show. The number of variable stars in Messier 3 make it a very interesting object to view through the telescope, and that is why it ranks 26th on our wonder wall, which is just a little bit higher than Messier 13, solely for the fact that I find it a bit more interesting to image. Now, for our final wonder of the night, there is a storm brewing so large on it that it could engulf our planet three times over. It is nicknamed the god of all planets for a very good reason. This is Jupiter. If you watched my video earlier this week on the top 10 visual wonders of our night sky, you will already know that I think Jupiter is the very best wonder to view for an amateur telescope. Not only is it super easy and obvious to find, it's always a little different to how it was before. It's one thing to see a planet through your telescope, but to see these four moons dancing around it is a different experience entirely. I've always found it the easiest planet to image. In fact, even using a $500 two inch smart telescope, you can see the bands of the gas giant. And once you step things up and start using a specialized planetary telescope, you can not only make out the distinct color and structure of the gas giant's atmosphere, you can also make out the color of its moons. As amateurs here on Earth, it is more than possible to capture the greeny, orangey hues of the most volcanic world in our solar system, Io. That is insane, but still not as crazy as the fact that with the help of Hubble, you can make out the surface details present on all four of the Galilean moons. You can also clearly identify here the swirling bands that make up the Great Red Spot. Large enough to engulf our planet multiple times, this is the largest storm in our entire solar system. Yeah, I just think Jupiter is the best. Its four largest moons are so exciting that growing up, I used to write fake mission reports about what would happen if I landed on them. I'm so obsessed that during the second season of Astronomical, I spent two months learning how to use a 3D software called Blender so that I could create a scene from my living room that looked as though I was standing on the surface of the largest moon in our entire solar system, Ganymede. Do you see that moon just there? That is Io. It is the most volcanic world in our solar system. It is a hellish landscape, but even there may exist life. It makes up one of the four Galilean moons, all of which are potentially habitable. We could one day colonize those moons. We could live on them. And if you are wondering why that looked and sounded so bad, it's because it was filmed almost five years ago in my mum and dad's living room at about four in the morning. If you listen carefully, you can hear my dog snoring on the sofa, as well as the absurdly loud ticking of the clock in our kitchen. Even your cheapest and most bog standard pair of binoculars allows you to make out the moons. It's very unique that you can see this marvel so easily and yet every single night you view it, their positions will have changed. It's even cooler that as amateurs we can create time lapses to showcase the rotation of the planet and the celestial ballet of its moons. That's why for me, Jupiter gets a whopping beauty rating of 87, a significant power rating of 76, and a mystery value of 81. I cannot wait to see what we find on its moons. All in all, this leads to a wonder rating of 81. Now that Jupiter is finally returning to our evening skies, it means it's a great time to get outside, look up with a small pair of binoculars or a small telescope, and make out these four faint points of light dancing around the moon. I was in two minds whether or not to include the Galilean moons as a separate wonder entirely, and if I did, 
where do you think they would rank on our wonder wall what ratings would you give them in terms of power beauty and mystery let me know in the comments down below this does mean that jupiter ranks within the top six of our leaderboard however it does rank just behind saturn in sixth place proving that bigger isn't always better And there we go. That's all we have time for this week. But don't worry, I'll be back again next week with three new wonders to share with you and see where they rank on our wonder wall. One of these wonders that we'll be looking at next week is one of the most mysterious wonders of the entire series. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Thank you for joining me and I hope to see you again next week. I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical. Next week, we're taking a look at the International Space Station and how you can see it yourself from your own garden, as well as how to spot the Dumbbell Nebula and whatever this mysterious patch of fuzzy light is. Hmm. Let me know your guesses for what it is down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next week.